Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give God thanks tonight. We give God honor tonight. I, before I get into the, the, the message, there are two things I want to do that God has placed on my heart. First, I just want to just pray a special prayer for Prophet Bernard right now. And I'm just going to. Uh, we're talking tonight about coming out of Lodibar and what a theme based on what God is doing. What a theme based on what we are sensing in our spirits. What a theme based on the flow of the Holy Ghost, the elevation of God's people, mighty God. Last week, Sunday, we spoke about, oh God, elevate us. And there was a signal sent to heaven. I believe this signal communicated to God that we are ready for a seismic shift. And today we are pregnant. We are pregnant and about to give birth, mighty God, to elevation. Mighty God, we are pregnant with something big, something great. We feel the motion of the Holy Spirit within our soul, within our spirit. And there is a, 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 a change in the mindset. There is a discomfort in the heart with this low bar condition mighty god and so tonight we are talking about coming out of low bar i want to draw our attention our attention sorry to the scripture in second samuel 9 this entire scripture speaks about the situation that a prince, watch me, found himself in a prince and how a king, a newly ascended king, moving based on the grace of God in his heart and the covenant that was made with this prince's father sought to lift this man out of Lodibar. The Bible tells us in 2 Samuel 9 and verse 5 that David sent word and had him brought from the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, from Lodibar. This hymn is Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, grandson of King Saul. And let's look at just some backdrop here to so set the tone right. We're talking about coming out of Lodibar, but let's look at how this man got into Lodibar. The Bible tells us that Saul, through disobedience, was demoted. Saul, through disobedience, had the kingdom taken from him and given to David. The Bible tells us that from that fateful day in Saul's life, an evil spirit attended him. And this spirit riled him up at one point where he sought to pin David to the wall. As time went on, there was a battle with Israel's arch rival, the Philistine. And the Bible tells us that the Philistines overcame the Israelites. 
And Saul and his sons, including Jonathan, were pursued by the Philistines. The Philistines, the Philistines eventually overtook them and slaughtered Saul's sons. They, they, they seriously wounded Saul, but killed his sons. And the Bible tells us that Saul eventually committed suicide. Upon hearing this, a nurse who was attending to Mephibosheth grabbed him. She was, they were in Jezreel. She grabbed him. I guess they got wind that the Philistines were en route to totally eradicate the dynasty of Saul. And she grabbed Mephibosheth at the age of five years. And in her haste, he fell and he was crippled. And taking him out of arm's way, he ended up in Lodabar, in the house of Makar, a son or descendant of Amiel, a nobleman, a contemporary of King David. And it was at this refuge he was cared for. The word Lodibar means no pasture. Second Samuel 17 and 27. It also means, watch this, no word. No word. It also means no communication. Watch this. No provision, no revelation, mighty God, and no hearing from God. It was a type of project for those of us who are in the United States and in England, we know what is referred to as a housing project. In the Caribbean, we call these areas ghetto, and in some other uh, territories, they call these areas slums, slums. The Bible tells us that Mephibosheth was in a place where there was no pasture, no word no communication. He was the only surviving son of Jonathan who was the best friend of King David. And tonight, if we are going to come out of Lodibar, we would do well, mighty God, to learn some important lessons from Mephibosheth's interaction with King David. Because this interaction is one of elevation. This interaction is one of coming out, rasekete, moving from a place where there is no pasture, no hope, no word, no revelation, no communication to a place of the free flow of the Holy Spirit. I want us to do a systematic compare, comparison, sorry, and contrast of this interaction and see if we can pull some valuable lessons as God gets ready to move us out of Lodibar. The first thing I want to bring to your attention, and I made it 
I made mention of it already, is that Mephibosheth was the lame son of a prince. By birth, he is royal. By his lineage, he is royalty. He is the son of a prince, the grandson of a failed king, mighty God. He is royalty, though not living royally. He is royalty, though not living royally. The Bible tells us that he was brought to a place of refuge because of what took place with his father and grandfather. And this place became a holding cell, a prison of sorts for a continued downward trajectory. In Lodibar, there was no word, no revelation, no hearing from God. Mighty God, in Lodibar, it was depression, hopelessness, no pasture, not even the men who sleep under the moon and stars, shepherds, wanted to go down to Lodibar. There was no mighty God. There was no marketplace in Lodibar. Lodibar had nothing to offer. And this is where the son of a prince, the son of a king, found himself without any power to move because he was lame. Mighty God. Some of us have been trying for years to get to a place of elevation. We tried 12 step programs. We tried two step programs. We tried 10 step programs, which mighty God. We try seminars. We try conferences. We tried, my God Almighty, am I speaking to somebody here tonight? We tried mighty God education. We tried oh, all manner of things. Some of us are coming from some families who tried oh, to do it through witchcraft. My God, they, they tried to protect, they tried to change the fortune through witchcraft. Mighty God, and all it ended up doing was to sink us more in Lodibar. But tonight, we have been bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And watch this comparison. Like Mephibosheth, we too are sons and daughters of a king, but not just any king, not just a king, but the king of kings. Mighty God, like Mephibosheth, we were lame, we were crippled, but through our king, mighty God, who came down to Lodibar, who came down into the mire and lifted us, my God Almighty, there is a way out. We see coming in perfect view our escape route through the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter 2, 9, that we are royalty. Hear the word of God, mighty God. Hear the word of God, people who are exodusing from Lodibar. You are a chosen race. You are a chosen race. You are a chosen race. I'm reading from the NIV. You are a chosen race. A royal priesthood. A consecrated nation. 
a special people, a people for God's own possession. Watch this. Watch me carefully. Look in your camera and look upon me, God. Take a good look at me. That you may proclaim that your life may testify of the excellencies, the wonderful deeds and virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness, Lodimar, out of nothingness, Lodibar, out of desperation and degradation, Lodibar, into his marvelous light. You have been called mighty God. You have been branded. You have been adopted. You are, you are the son, the sons and daughters of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Watch me. Romans 8, 15 through to 17. For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading again to fear of God's judgment, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons. The spirit of God produce, producing in you sonship by which we joyfully cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies and confirms together with our spirit, assuring us that we believers are children of God. And if we are his children, mighty God, then we are his heirs also. Heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing his spiritual blessings and inheritance, if indeed we share in his suffering, so that we may also share in his glory. I want to see, I want to share this in your conscience in your consciences you are prince and princesses the fact that your current position might be low the bar doesn't take away from the truth that you are a prince or a princess it doesn't negate the fact you are Rasekete Karobasata royalty tonight. And royalty cannot do, do low, lowliness and, and low the bar. Royalty don't do that. Watch me. For seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve years, you might have been helpless. You might have been in uh, unable to lift yourself but watch this in this season point number two point number two there is the summoning of the king there is the summoning of the king for those of us who are uh, uh averse or acquainted with uh, legal matters or law enforcement we know what it is to be summoned it means you are required to present yourself. It means a higher authority has sent for you, requiring your presence. Watch me. The Bible tells us that there was a summoning by the king. There was a summoning by the king. 
like the summoning of Mephibosheth by King David, mighty God, watch this. In this season, God has summoned us from Lodibar. God has signaled his intention for our elevation. He has called us from Lodibar. The Bible tells us that, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, help me, Lord. Let me not get, up, get ahead of myself. I'm building here. The Bible tells us that King David, when he was established, when he was settled, he looked around to do kindness to a dear friend of his. Jonathan. You see, he remembered how Jonathan watched out for him and looked out for him, even against his own family. You see, mighty God, may God, mighty God, watch me, watch me. Jonathan was content. Jonathan was okay with the fact that God had chosen David. Jonathan perceived in David something extraordinary that he didn't have, neither did his father, neither did anyone in his household. There was a grace upon David. There was a grace upon David that caused Jonathan to be drawn to David. And the by mighty God, may somebody, may somebody identify the grace of God upon you tonight. May somebody recognize that there is a grace upon you tonight. You are not just Constance. You are not just Nikki. You are not just Raquel. You are not just Pauline. There is something extraordinary about you. My Abba. You are royalty. The Bible tells us, watch me, that there was a summons. This summons was from the king. Listen to me, somebody in the prior room. There is a summons for you. This summons is not to put you behind bar. This summons is for your elevation. There is a summons with your name on it for promotion. I hear the man of God say promotion in righteousness, promotion in holiness, elevation, maka second in business. There is a summons with your name on it. Rosakata. This didn't come from an earthly king. Unlike Mephibosheth who got the summons from an earthly king, you and I are getting the summons from the king of kings. Come up. It's time for your elevation. It's time to get out of Lodibar. This summons is evidence in the fact that we are in the elevation room. In the fact that God impregnated his servant with a cry for elevation, with a holy maya kasekete, with a holy convocation, with a solemn assembly for elevation, for a time of reflection and introspection to take stock of where we are. And where we need to be. Because some of us are where we are. But we realize desperately that we are not where we need to be. Many situations and circumstances cause us to be where we are. But where we are is not where we are going to stay. Because there is a summons. Rasekete, rasakata, Born on angel wings. Born on the wings of angels for us to be lifted. There is a summons. Can you imagine no word, no communication, 
no pastor. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, out of the blues on the on the horizon, on the horizon, chariots, horsemen, mighty God troops, mighty God dressed in fine clothing. And you think they might be coming from Macur. You think they might be coming from your neighbor down the street. You think they might be coming from the neighbor next door. But lo and behold, they show up. Lo and behold, they are at your door. And they knock and they say, is there a Mephi Buffet? Mephi Buffet in this residence? Yes, there is one. I am here. Oh, get ready, Mephi Buffet. Here is some clothes. Here is a change of clothes. Here is a purple garment. Here is ah, some shoes. Here is a special chariot. The king has sent for you. There is a summons with your name on it. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. But I know I'm speaking to somebody. There is a summons from the king of glory with your name on it. It's sealed in purple. Ah, it's sealed with a signet ring. Ah, it is makasata. It has golden wax on it. Ah, it has been born on mashekende. Angels are the messenger. And they have come knocking. They have come seeking the one whose name is on that summon. There's a summon, a summon for elevation from the king of kings. The Bible tells us that Mephibosheth was brought before King David. Watch me. Point number three, our response to this summons must be worship. <laughs> Mighty God, our response must be worship from a position of knowing that we who are undeserving, who are not worthy, have been counted worthy through the blood of Jesus Christ. Through his intercessory ministry, he has released, my God, he has released gifts to men. He has released anointings to men. Mighty God, mighty God. In view of this, this is how Paul render it in Romans chapter 12. After Paul gave such a wonderful discourse between Romans 1 to 11, Paul said, this is, uh, this is how Paul rendered it. This is what Paul said. Paul said, I beg you, therefore, I beg you, therefore, present your bodies as living sacrifice in view, in view of what the king has done done in view mighty God that he has adopted you and made you royalty in view that he has summoned you from your place of desperation and destitution and being and, and, and being destitute your place of desolation thank you Lord mighty God in view of this let's come with worship let's come prepared to give him all let's come in humility recognizing that we are nothing but have been made something we were nothing living in nothing coming from nothing and have been called to be something mighty god am i speaking to somebody here we were nothing living in nothing coming from nothing but all of a sudden adopted mixing faith with god's word and adopted by the through the finished work of jesus christ on the cross paid for in his blood mighty god mighty god mighty god and now 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are branded. We were rebranded royalty. When you saw, oh, hallelujah, I wish you could see. I wish you could see how God sees you. Decked in your purple. Decked makasata. What did the scripture say? You are seated in heavenly places. You see, long before you were born, God had already ordained your elevation out of love. Lord Ibar, because he said you are seated oh, in heavenly places with Christ. Rebranded man. Watch me now. This that God has done requires nothing less, nothing short of or all. Like Mephibosheth, we must come with worship. We must come humbly, bow down, prostrate. Mephibosheth went as far as, far as saying, Lord, what, what, what have you to do with me, a dead dog? I am nothing. I am nothing. Oh, no, 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 Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth, I'm going to explain some things to you later on about who you really are. You see, you are the son of a king. You are this. He might have failed, but you are the son of a king. Mighty God Almighty. Realize this, that Saul failed, but our father cannot fail. We are the sons of a king. This calls for a total revolutionization in our thinking concerning worship. What? This is who I am? What? This is what is This is what was done for me? I come Abba. I come Abba. I have been given the spirit of sonship, not slavery, not bondage, not bond servant, sonship. Abba Father, I come with worship. I come to lay it all on the altar. I come with full abandonment of all that I am and ever hope to be. I just want you. I just want to please you. I just want to worship you. I hear your call. Rasekete, this rumbling in our spirit and souls, it's the call for the lifting out of Lodibar. It's the shift. It's the seismic shift that is taking place, transplanting us from nothingness, from the backside of the wilderness to come. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody is mighty God. Somebody's mindset is being reconfigured. Somebody's mindset, somebody's getting a breakthrough right now. If it's you, just say amen. Just type amen. Just type amen. If it's you, just type amen. Somebody has just realized that they are royalty. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Note how Mephibosheth humbled himself before David. Take note. The Bible said he bowed with his face to the ground. You summoned me, my Lord. Here I am. Watch me. Jesus Christ has summoned us. Our response must be with our spirits, our heart, our mind, everything that we are to the ground. Here I am, Lord. Fully surrendered. Fully engaged in your next move. Fully, fully, fully willing to participate. Hallelujah. Fully willing to be a part of your lifting process. We must come with worship. Point number four. From David's interaction with Mephibosheth. There is a covenant. Or there was a covenant. Of peace. 
between David and Jonathan that spoke to the actions taken now by David concerning Mephibosheth. How do we know that? Let's look to the word. The Bible tells us, watch this, the Bible tells us ah, that there was a stirring in David's spirit. David said, ah, 2 Samuel 9, uh, 2 Samuel, sorry, 9, verse 1, David said, is there still anyone, watch this, left of the house of the family of Saul, to whom, to whom I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake. There was a covenant of peace that was speaking over Mephibosheth. <laughs> you see, you may be in Lodibar. You may be at the place of nothingness. But I want to tell you that like Mephibosheth, there is a covenant speaking over you. Watch this. There was a covenant of peace between David and Jonathan. Watch me. There is a covenant of salvation between God and man paid for, bought by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. Matthew 26, verse 28. For this is my blood of the new and better covenant, which ratifies the agreement and is being poured out for many as a substitutionary atonement for the forgiveness of sins. Mighty God, there was a covenant speaking over Mephibosheth. There was a covenant of peace between David and Jonathan. And David, being stirred in his spirit, said, my God, my God, is there somebody that I can show kindness to for Jonathan's sake? You see, the covenant is not dead. Jonathan might uh, have passed on, but the covenant was alive. Mighty God and spirit speaking and the covenant begin to stir in David's soul. David said, where is somebody from Saul's house? Not because of Saul, but for Jonathan's sake, I'm going to show kindness. Watch me, watch me, watch me. Hear the covenant speaking in the heavenly realms now, a better covenant. There is a blood on the mercy seat before our heavenly father not just any blood it is the precious blood of jesus christ and it is speaking it has ratified a covenant it has ratified a covenant for elevation out of lodimar watch me mighty god when jesus saved you and i that was the Marco Sakata, Rico Shanda, the beginning of the lifting because we were crippled in sin we were crippled in iniquities we were crippled in desperation and degradation but lo and behold in the fullness of time here comes the lamb of god who was already crucified from the foundation of the world. Ah, and the Bible tells us that he took the bread and break it and he gave them the cup and he said, watch me, this is now the ratification of a better covenant, not just for a few, but for many, for the lift of many out of the cesspool of sin. And watch me, this covenant didn't just stop at salvation. <laughs> this covenant didn't just stop at mighty God. This was, that was the beginning because he said, listen to me now, I've come to give you life and, I'm come, and I've come to give you it more abundantly. That means 
fullness of life. That means the Zoe life. That means righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That means contentment, satisfaction, peace, nothing broken, shalom, nothing broken, nothing missing, everything coming back in alignment. And watch me, you cannot tell of God's excellent goodness and grace in Lodibar. Watch me, watch me, watch me. God has to elevate you. Why? Because his reputation as God is on the line. His reputation of king of kings and lord of lord is on the line. You are his showpiece. You are his showpiece. And he has to speak through you. Oh, mighty God, mighty God. So he's going to revisit <laughs> all the benefits that were ratified in this covenant. Didn't you know that this covenant secure your peace? Oh, hallelujah. This covenant secured your upliftment. This covenant secured your elevation. Watch me. The covenant of peace between David and Jonathan spoke for Mephibosheth. It brought the king's kindness to a place of nothingness. <laughs> Mighty God. Can I tell somebody tonight that you may you, you may have been skipped over a hundred times, but the king's kindness is going to locate you tonight. In the elevation room, the king's kindness is going to locate you tonight because there is a covenant speaking on your behalf. There, the precious blood of Jesus Christ is before the Father in the heavenly tabernacle in the heavenly holy of holies and when he sees the blood he is calling to remembrance that which was promised to you mighty god in 2021 in january 2021 there is a summoning for elevation why is there a summoning for elevation god is remembering the covenant that is speaking on your behalf Number five, there will be restoration. You are royalty. You have been summoned. You must respond with an in worship. <laughs> there is a covenant, a better covenant, speaking on your behalf watch me there will be restoration and david said to him do not be afraid fear not elevation room don't be afraid for i will certainly show you kindness for the sake of jonathan and will restore to you all the land of your grandfather Saul, and you shall always eat at my table. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. You were not given a good education. Oh, because your parents couldn't afford it. Afford it. This year this year is your is your year for educational elevation you're coming out of mighty god you're coming out of the lord the bar of ignorance oh hallelujah you may have been looked over 
in your church because they thought you are the least of the least in your family. Mighty God, and it is pure politics in your ministry. Oh, you don't look good enough. You are not a part of the elite crew. You weren't a part of this and that. Your family weren't from there and here. But this year, God is going to take you out and lift you up. He's going to take you out of the, the low bar of religiosity. You may have been passed over, mighty God, and the job. You have, may have been looked over for the promotion, but this year, God is going to take you out of the low bar of lack of promotion. Mighty God, those who don't want to elevate you will have to elevate you. God is going to move. God is going to make your enemy pronounce your blessing like how ah, Haggai pronounced Mordecai's blessing. The king is going to summon ah, that wicked advisor what would you do for such and such a person in the company ah they're going to make their recommendation think it in thinking it is them and then they're gonna hear lo and behold go and do such for Rhonda. go and do such for shamara go and do such for samantha Mighty God, there will be restoration. When God summons you, when God ah, adopts you, uh, when God is elevating you, watch me, there will be restoration. Watch me. What I didn't get in 10 years in one ministry, because I was at a church that they hold me down. They never want to release me, man. <laughs> they, 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 they keep me, they keep me in check for 10 years. But watch me. <laughs> Within one year, God elevate me. What 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 I could get in 10? Come in one maka sekete la paka secondada basete. Don't you know that God is going to restore you? Mighty God, you see, Lodibar cannot handle what God needs to put on you, so He has to take you out. Lodibar cannot handle rasekete the level that you are at you you cannot they cannot handle what god is going to put on you mighty god so he there has to be a lifting and when you are lifted when you are taken out you're going to be restored what mephibosheth lost in one year over the period of time when his father Saul, when his grandfather Saul died, when his father Jonathan died, and when Ishbosheth, his big brother, was, was suddenly robbed of his right hand man Abner because of Joab's. Ah, vengeful spirit. And the Bible says Ish, Ish, Bish, Ish, Ish Boshet was weakened, and two Berathites, two Berathite brothers killed him. And the Bible said that, oh, it was all gone, all downhill from there. Within one minute, all was restored to Mephibosheth. Mighty God, I hear the man of God saying the other day, God is not limited by time. So don't worry that you are running out of time. No, 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 no. We serve a out of time God, not constrained by the chronos. 
by the timeline. You see, mighty God, mighty God. Can I minister to somebody in the prayer room tonight? God had Abraham in a holding pattern for 25 years. When Sarai saw that, oh, 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 oh the fountain is drying up here, Abraham. The fountain is dwindling. Paradventure God will do a a quick one through Agar. See a young, nice, sexy girl here. Raise up seed. And oh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna help God. God, God said, no, 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 no. Stay in the holding pattern, man. Go back in the holding pattern. Go back in the low, the bar of barrenness. Make a hole you there for 25 years. Because when this woman get pregnant, it will be from your lines and it will be her womb and she's going to produce fruit. Mighty God, mighty God. What Abraham and Sarah couldn't get in 170 odd years combined, God do it within nine months. No, 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 no. Watch me. Abandon your attempts. Oh, hallelujah. Abandon your efforts to shift from Lodimar. Come on, no 10-step program here. We have a one-step program. We have a Holy Ghost program. It's a one-step program because all your shaking and moving and all your mother and papa shaking and moving couldn't get you out of Lodibar. But watch me. Within the first 21 days of 2021, God is going to elevate you out of Lodibar. And he's going to restore. <laughs> Your fortunes will be restored. Your health will be restored. Can I minister to somebody in the prayer room tonight? You're coming out of Lodibar. And God is getting ready to load you up. You will be restored. You will be restored in your mind. You will be restored in your body. You will be restored in your spirit. You will be restored in your intellect. Ah, some of you are going to get some supernatural ability for learning. Some of you are going to get some extraordinary giftings in your hands. What Maka say, I hear the Holy Ghost saying, I'm distributing skills right now. I'm distributing Thing, some ah some skills right now ah some business ideas are coming into view right now and some divine enablers are en route to locating you there will be restoration point number five sorry number six there will be provision. There will be provision. The Bible said, Then the king summoned Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to him. Restoration. Watch me. You and your sons and your servants shall cultivate the land for him. And you shall bring him the produce so that your master's grandson may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, <laughs> but Mephibosheth, your master, your master's grandson shall always eat at my table as one of my sons. Look here, man. Look here. Look here, prayer room. Look here, elevation room. God is getting ready. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I hear, I hear my, I hear my dear brother of yesteryear crying out to me in Psalms 23. He has prepared a table before me in the presence 
of my enemy. I said, there will be provision. Stop worrying about how it's going to come to pass. Stop worrying about how it's going to happen. Listen to me. The God who is taking you out of Lodibar owns the cattle on a thousand hills. The God who is taking you out of Lodibar owns the earth. Rasekete. The God who is shifting you from Lodibar has all the wealth of the world, even those in secret places. If he has to command 10 fish to locate you by the riverbank tomorrow when you go for fish and start to spit out gold pellets, he will do it. I said he will do it. There will be provisions. God is not going to take you out of Lodibar <laughs> to make you experience Lodibar. No, 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 no. In Lodibar, there was no pasture. But here God, through his servant David, my dear brother, who gone on to be with him, he put me in green pasture. He lead me in green pasture and there restore my soul. Mighty God, can I speak to some broken hearted people tonight? Can I minister to some, some, spirit, some souls that are broken? You will be restored and God will provide for you. He lead me in green pastures and cause me to lay down beside still waters. The perfect picture of the twin provision and restoration. God is concerned about the areas you are lacking in and he has already made provision. Step out. Step out. Listen to me. You see the low bar mentality? The low bar mentality say, I cannot. I don't have the money. I, 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 uh, my mama and my papa never. They are, uh, I was on my line. I was, I was, I was. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Stop. Rewind. Take check. Let's look at some provision. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. All things are passed away. All mentalities, all way of thinking, all way of economics, all way of mathematics, all way, all way of uh, approaching science, mighty God, all way of doing things, all things now, all things are becoming new. It is judged and viewed through the lens of the possibilities of the God you serve. Mighty God, mighty God, not the limitations and the failures and faults of the old man, but the elevation and promotion of the new man in Christ. I can do all things through Christ, Paul said, who strengthens me. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear that. Ah, I'm dealing with that mindset, that low bar mindset, ah, that is wrestling with the truth that you are a princess, you are the daughter of the king of kings. I'm dealing with that mindset that said there is no resource, there is no provision. Mighty God, supernaturally, God will get it to you. Just launch. The Bible said, watch me as I close up this on provision. Provision is going to come into view 
when we move in obedience to God's instruction. The summons was sent. He has issued some instruction. Don't you know that he has commanded somebody to locate you? There is a divine enabler on route to you. But if you don't follow God's instruction to get up and move, there might be a missing in the alignment because where you ought to be, you were not because you are overly concerned about how it is going to work, when it is work going to work, and why it is going to work. You listen, don't worry about the when and the how and the why and the who and the where. No, 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 no. Let Leave that to the God of, in, of the invisible. Oh, he said, get up and go down to the street. Go down to the street. He said, stand on the corner. Wait on the corner. My kasekete. Let him who is responsible for the invisible activities do the invisible work is putting the pieces together so that by the time he said to your divine enabler go down to meet him at the crossroads all the provisions are set in perfect harmony that's why when you don't hear from god don't get overly concerned just continue in prayer Continue in trusting because the God of the invisible is like a master chess player. He's just moving some pieces. He's just moving some things into position so that you can get your breakthrough. So that you can be provided for. So that provisions will come in abundance. I hear a wrestling in my spirit. Somebody is questioning how, when, why. Be at peace. You're coming out a the bar. And the provisions are already made. Watch me. The way of God is going to do it. You don't have to tap into that. Because him say you're going to eat at the table. <laughs> him say farm the land. Bring the money, come and give the man the profits. But guess what? Him no need to spend it because him going to dwell at my table. There is going to be an overflow in 2021. God is going to just miraculously. Listen to me. I'm not telling you of what is not already going on in my own life. You ask my wife, anybody who is dear and close to me, you ask them. You see these gray here? You see them? These were from 10 years of worrying and stressing out myself and trying to figure out how oh God. But yes, when God bring me to the place of peace, yes, when God bring me to the place and, uh, of, of rest, me stop worry. Between here where I sit and where you sit and where Prophet Bernard sit and where my brother and my sister sit and where my brother and sisters in Christ sit between here and where God dwells there is nothing in between that should rattle you and I hear me and hear me well hear me and hear me good you see the day you see Michael come down from heaven with one of his wings broken telling you that there was a coup in heaven that's the day you should start to fret the whole universe is in turmoil. And you say, because that is impossible, be at peace. You will be provided for. God will take care of the need. Be at peace. Be at peace. Can I speak to somebody tonight? Oh, be at peace. Provisions have already been made. You are, you are, you are, you are extracted from Lodi Bar. Strangers will build your wall. Strangers will build your wall. My wife was recently ministering to our dear sister in Canada. And the sister is going to college, university. And the sister was on the verge of being kicked out of Canada because she couldn't find the school fee and she couldn't um, renew 
some documentation based on paying the fee and getting that thing from the university to take to immigration to say she has another term and so forth. And she was worried and she called my wife. And my wife said to her, listen to me. God is going to raise up somebody to help you. And this is what you need to do. And she was telling my sister, my wife, some things. The sister was telling my wife some things about so-and-so. And she mentioned a particular person. And my wife said, that's the person you must go to. She said, that's the person that God has ordained to help you. And she started, but how, but when, but why, but who, but where, but he, but ha, but he, but brr, and all finite things. My wife said, rest. This is what you're going to do. You're going to go to that person and you're going to explain the situation to that person. And you're going to tell that person that can I talk to somebody about provision tonight? Can I testify tonight about provision? You're going to tell that person X, Y, and Z, and that you're thanking them for their help. Mighty God, the woman of God, obeyed the prophet. She obeyed the prophetess. And when she went to that person and explained the situation, hear the person to her. I was waiting on you. <laughs> I have the check ready for you. Mighty God, full scholarship, full funding to finish school and get her degree. Come on, the man. You're talking about coming out a load of bar. You're wondering how it's going to come together. God has already made provisions. Be a peace mighty god point number seven the final point about this interaction as we systematically compare and contrast this interaction between king david and mephibosheth watch out for the zebras who will try to remove you from your place of elevation. Watch out for the zebras who will try to get you back into Lodibar. Watch out for the zebras who will try to discredit you. The Bible tells us in 2 Samuel 16 and verse 3, and let me give you a backdrop here. So this is now a point in time in David's rule when Solomon rose up against him and Solomon attempted and was successful in a coup. He overthrew his dad and he was now fully and firmly in control at Jerusalem. And David was on his way out full steam ahead. The Bible tells us in verse uh, 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 3 of uh, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 16, let me just read it here, that when David was past the Mount of Olives, Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, the servant of Mephibosheth met him with donkeys, with food and drink, wine, etc. And said to him, this is for you, your majesty, the food for the young men and the young women so that they will be refreshed. They won't fall down in the wilderness and a little wine to catch you up. Yes. We need a little wine every now and then. Amen. <laughs> Nothing wrong. Don't get drunk. And they say, here are some donkeys so that the young men can ride on, etc. Then the king said to him, David said to him, now David is running for his life because Absalom, who attempted and was successful in this school, was bent on killing David. Watch me. The Bible tells us that Ziba 
was asked, where is Mephibosheth? David said to him, where is your master, Mephibosheth? Where is your master, Mephibosheth? Why is he not with me? Why didn't he come here, Mephibosheth, with his deceitful and conniving self? Your Mephibosheth remains in Jerusalem, your majesty. For he said, this is a lie. For he said, today the house of Israel will give me back the kingdom of my father. Watch me. Mephibosheth wasn't bitter toward David. Mephibosheth, like Jonathan, by now realized that this man is indeed called to be the king of Israel. Mephibosheth had no ambition to be restored over Israel. He wasn't looking for an handout. As a matter of fact, he had resigned himself to a quiet life. He, he, he resolved within himself that he was going to live a quiet life in Lodibar. And uh, this, this dynasty has ended and this is the end of it. But God remembered the man in his lowly state and elevated him. And in this time of political turmoil, watch how some people will try to bring you back down into Lodibar. Will try to discredit you after God has lifted you. The Bible said that Ziba said he has ambition to be king again. And watch this. Watch this, my friends. Watch this. He said today the house of my father... Um, the kingdom of my father will be restored. Watch this. Then the king said to Ziba, Behold, everything that belonged to Mephibosheth is now yours. The king spoke a word after restoring Mephibosheth, after lifting Mephibosheth and restoring and providing for him and so on and so forth. The Bible said, the king said, based on the lie and the, the conniving, deceitful, bad mind, dirty spirit of Zeba, he said, I take back everything. I take it back. And here it is. You take possession of it. Everything that belonged to your master is now yours. Watch out for the Zebas in your life. When you are elevated, you cannot take them with you. You have to leave them. Some of them Zeba are your own flesh and blood. Some of these Zebas are your own flesh and blood. Some of the Zebas are some unsanctified mind, unconsecrated heart in your church. Some of these zebras are who you're breaking bread with. Watch out. Beware. Test the spirit. Test the heart. Test the motive. Be vigilant. Ask God to mokasakata to lay bare the hearts of those in your circle. Because not everyone wants to see you come out of Lodi Bar. Can I minister to somebody tonight? And this is not something now for you to go around and be suspicious of every people, everybody in your circle. You look up, oh, this one won't pull me down. Oh, and, and, and every action. No, 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 no. That's not your job. Your job is to just trust God, rely on the spirit. And when he reveals to you, act accordingly. Come on. We have some people take over the role of the Holy Spirit. I used to be in a church where them, them see demon in everything. If you sneeze, demon the fire. <laughs> Come on, no man. Our responsibility is not, God not give us, there's no Sherlock Holmes anointing. In the kingdom of God, there's no Sherlock Holmes anointing. You know the Sherlock Holmes anointing? You're looking under every stone. You're reading between every line. You're analyzing every statement. You're cross-examining every utterance. You're looking into every matter. You're watching how this person dress. They are for me. They... No, 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 no. God didn't call you to that. Come on. That's another low bar mentality. 
What I'm simply saying is that you got to take stock of your company in this season of elevation and know that it's not everyone you can move forward with. It's not everyone that you can go up with at, at, the, at the slightest chance to nail you. At the slightest chance to nail you. If the door to nail you just crack this much, believe you me, a missile coming through it from them. Because their heart is not perfect towards you. Their heart is not perfect toward what God wants to do in your life. Be careful of the zebras around you. Lo and behold, when God, when David, sorry, met Mephibosheth for himself, because after Absalom's death, David returning to Jerusalem, Mephibosheth came out to meet him. Be mindful of those who wants to see you in the company of the king. Those are the ones God wants to elevate you with. Remember, he was a cripple, so he could go meet the king himself. Somebody had to carry him. And the Bible said that he met the king. And the king said, Mephibosheth, why didn't you come with me? Why didn't you come with me? I think we found that, find that in 2 Samuel 21. He said, Mephibosheth, why didn't you come with me? Why weren't you there to meet me? And the Bible said, Mephibosheth answered, I was deceived. I was deceived. You know what? This, my servant was supposed to saddle an ass. He didn't. The same servant who was given charge to be under me revolted and abandoned me. But watch me. I bear in my body the signs of my loyalty and commitment to you. Watch me. The Bible said from the day David left, Mephibosheth didn't groom, didn't put on a royal apparel. He was in mourning. His, his, his hair was all over the place. His beard was all over the place. He was in shabby clothes. And the king said, Okay, you and Ziba, you are going to split the land. You are going to share in the inheritance. Come on, the man. Come on, the man. Watch out for the Zebas who want to pull you down. But be mindful of the company who wants you to remain and who is at the slightest slip are going to take you back into the presence of the king. The Bible said that what Ziba attempted to do in discrediting and cheating Mephibosheth out of his restoration backfired. He wasn't successful. And the Bible said that Mephibosheth would be partner with him in the possession of the land because you see you have to understand the king could have take back the word he said the land is yours we give i give saul's land to you in light of the fact that you said to me mephibosheth has revolted but when truth come to light that word was already established by the king so he had to speak another word to equate or cancel it in this instance, it's equal because they now share the land. Nonetheless, Mephibosheth was still the master of Ziba. <laughs> and Mephibosheth 
remain at the king's table. And Mephibosheth was still highly honored. Ah, and his faithfulness was rewarded because when the judgment of God took Israel because of the Gibeonites, the Bible said that David speared Mephibosheth because of the covenant he had with Jonathan, but he gave the Gibeonites Saul's other relatives, other grandson by one of his daughters. And they, one of them too was named uh, Mephibosheth. And they paid the penalty for Saul's treachery against the Gibeonites because he sought to eliminate them in his untamed zeal. Coming out of Lodibar, mighty God, mighty God. You are a king. You are a prince. You are a princess. You are a queen. Why? Because your father is the king of kings. You are not only just a priest. You are not just royalty. You are priestly royalty you are priestly royalty joint ears with Christ watch me there is a summons with your name on it God <laughs> the king of glory the one who no one can refute the one who no one can rebut as a summon issued with your name for elevation. There's a summon with your name on it. We must respond in worship. This kind of summon, this kind of branding, this kind of adoption demands the total abandonment of self into the hands of God. We are to totally abandon us in care, in the care of the Holy Spirit. This is the greatest act of worship, the total giving over of ourselves as living sacrifice. There is a covenant that is greater than any other covenant. I don't care how much dead spirit your ancestors evoke. I don't care how much demon make altar they erect. If you can subscribe to this covenant that is speaking over many, you will be delivered. Mighty God, and you are delivered. Rasekete, I come in agreement to everyone here within this elevation room that we are connecting our spirits, our souls, to the covenant that is written and birthed by the blood of Jesus Christ. There is a better covenant that supersedes all covenants that is speaking on our behalf. There will be restoration. There is going to be restoration. God is going to bring back that which you have missed for three years, that which you were robbed at for 10 years, that which you were disenfranchised from for 30 years. God is going to restore it in a short window. There will be provision. Don't worry about how, where, when, why? Leave that to the God of the invisible. Just step out from Lodibar. Shift. Mighty God. Get rid of the Lodibar thinking. Get rid of the Lodibar attitude. Get rid of the Lodibar posturing. And step out. Step out by faith. Step out in confidence in God. The God of the invisible. Mighty God. 
and know that provisions will be made. Your father, my father, or Abba father, is working in the invis invisible like a master chess player moving the pieces together to perfectly align for your benefit. Never forget that. Watch out for zebras. You cannot carry them with you out of Lodibar. You have to leave zebras in Lodibar. They need a revelation of Christ for themselves. They need ah, maturing in the spirit for themselves. You, you only can pray for them, but you cannot carry them into your elevation as God is lifting you out of Lodibar. But be mindful of the faithful ones. Surround yourself with them. Those who, general, who, who genuinely want to see you progress in God. Mighty God. You have one here in the prior room. A man of God, Prophet Bernard. Come on, this is good company. He, he don't have no bad mind. He don't have no bad heart. He wants to see you progress in God. I can tell you, I want to see you progress in God. I was ministering in church today and I said to a particular sister, you don't have to worry about me being bad mind. No, 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 no. I am, I am genuinely interested in your success. Why? Because your progress your success is my progress. Your upliftment, your elevation is my elevation. And when I can rejoice in your upliftment, it simply means I am also attaching myself to the blessing stream, the blessing flow that moved you out of your loaded bar. And my time will come. Be mindful of those who want you in the presence of the king continually and surround yourself with them. Tonight, tonight I decree and declare that God is taking us out of our lowly bars, whatever shape they may be in, whatever form they are. In Mephibosheth's case, it was a physical place. A barren place, no pasture, no word, a, a desolate place, an empty place, no communication. In your case, it may be a mindset, it may be an attitude, it may be the church you are in, it may be the company that you keep, it may be a family a cycle, whatever it is tonight. God is lifting you out of your lowly bar. May God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. It's my greatest privilege at this moment to hand it over back to the man of God, Prophet Dr. B, in care of the Holy Ghost. God bless you in Jesus' name.